each muscle is actually a, a basically an organ. Okay? An organ, I mentioned before, it's a group of tissues that function together to form a single, a single task. And then as we go through and we study the different muscles, we're going to talk about the action of a certain muscle. Okay? So we'll say, okay, let's talk about the biceps muscle. What's the action of the biceps? It's to flex, the sh flex at the shoulder and at the elbow. We'll talk about another muscle. What's the triceps muscle? That's going to do extension of the elbow. So each muscle is like an individual organ that has a function. And that's what we're going to call the action of the muscle. Some muscles are going to have more than one action. And then it's going to have muscle tissue, it's going to have blood vessels, nerve fibers, connective tissue. So just like any other organ, it's a, it's a combination of different types of tissue that are put together to form one function. And then the cells that it's made of are going to be muscle cells or muscle fibers. And that's the elongated, uh, multinucleated cell. And that's going to have striations. So the skeletal muscle is going to be a long cell that has multiple nuclei in it. And then you're going to divide, combine it together to form fascicles. I just saw something. If you go into that Cleveland area, not the one but the melon, if you go into those cabinets, there's a bunch of those uh, new foam noodle things yeah. that are grouped together. Just grab a whole bunch of them. Okay. okay. And then some, I guess we can use, like, we'll use that paper. That roll there that's empty, if you can find something like that. All right, so you have muscle cells. So that's an actual individual muscle cell, and you're going to put groups of those together, and then those are going to become fascicles. Okay? And then we'll talk about these different tissue sheets. So I'm going to wait to talk about that because I want for him to grab something that directly. So we'll skip just a little bit and then we'll come back. So basically, muscles are, are going to go across a joint. You know, if it, if it just goes from one end of a solid bone to another end of a solid bone, it's not going to do anything, right? It has to go across a joint. Usually, one at least one joint, sometimes more than one joint, or multiple joints. If you talk about the erector muscles in the back, you're going to go across a lot of different joints. So then, when we talk about the origin and the insertion, when a muscle contracts, the insertion is what moves towards the origin. If we're talking about the biceps, the origin is going to be up here, and the insertion is going to be here. And then on the extremities, the origins are usually more proximal, and the insertions are more distal. So the origin's up here, and the insertion moves towards the origin. It's a basic premise. There's going to be a few exceptions, maybe. And for example, like if we're talking about the pectoralis muscle, okay, that's going to do this kind of motion. The origin is proximal, and the insertion is distal. So when that muscle moves, it's going to do this. Okay? But what if we stabilize the insertion when you do like a pull-up? then you're moving the origin towards the insertion. So it depends on how the muscle stabilized. But in a general sense, the uh, insertion is going to move towards the origin when the muscle contracts. And again, typically in the extremities, the origin is going to be more proximal, and the insertion is going to be more distal. So there's different ways that the muscles are going to attach. So you remember you have the periosteum of the bone, which is a membrane that surrounds the bone. So if it's a direct attachment or a flesh attachment, that muscle is going to attach directly to the periosteum of the bone. Or maybe in the case of it's attaching to cartilage, it would be the pericondium of the cartilage. So that's the, the not, that method's not quite as common. What happens usually is it's indirect where you're going to have, have connective tissue that's going to attach from the muscle to the bone, which is typically going to be a tendon. 
or an aponeurosis or something like that. Like on the biceps, the muscle goes into a long tendon, it's like basically a road. <coughs> Does the ligament connect two bones and the tendon connects a muscle to something else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Two bones. It's always a bone. Tendon always. Pretty much, yeah. So then indirectly, does where something like a tendon or a muscle, I mean an aponeurosis, or some type of connective tissue that extends beyond the muscle that connects to the bone. Because remember, muscle is one type of tissue, connective tissue is another type of tissue. So if a muscle directly attaches to the bone or the periosteum, that is a direct or fleshy attachment. And then indirect, which is the more common form, is where some type of connective tissue is spanning the gap. And so that's going to be attended. Can you give an example of the direct? A direct. Direct would be, uh, let's see, I think the temporalis muscle, like where it attaches right directly to the skull. But I'll make sure of that later. I think it's something like that. Basically, like some of the muscles, like tibialis anterior, it's going to attach more right onto the bone of the tibia. So now let's go back and do these membranes. Okay. So let's say here's going to be one, one muscle fiber, or one muscle cell. Okay. 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 So this is a muscle cell or a fiber. It's going to be a big, long muscle cell, and it's going to have nuclei interspersed throughout it. So it's a so skeletal muscle is multinucleated. All right. Then, we're going to put a wrapping around this individual muscle fiber. Okay. And that's going to be the endomycin. Okay. So this is the smallest level. Here we have a one individual muscle. Okay. And that has a membrane that's called endomycin. So endo meaning deep inside. Okay. So then each of these that muscle fibers are going to have endomycium around them. Okay? And then you have groups of muscle fibers, and then those are going to form a fascicle. Then you're going to have this, which is going to be the perimycin. Okay? And then that's a different fascicle. So let's say that this little yellow rope here is the perimycin. So these are individual muscle fibers. They're surrounded by what kind of membrane? Endomycin. Endomycin. You wrap up a bunch of individual muscle fibers into a muscle fascicle, and then what's this membrane called? Perimycin. Perimycin. Then we're going to put a whole bunch of fascicles together we're going to wrap that up all the way on the outside. Okay. So then what's this one called on the outside? Perimycin. Yeah. Okay. So that goes all the way around the outside. All right. So what's this individual one right here? This actual thing right here. That's, that's a muscle fiber. Is that that's one muscle cell, okay? And then what's this membrane right here? Endomycin. And you put a couple of those together, and then you have a, a muscle fascicle, and then what's this one? Perimycin. And you put a bunch of fascicles together, and then what do you have? Okay? Got it? Doesn't mean you might not have to study it a little bit more later, right?